All right, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming in the morning. Um, so our talk today is, uh, well, the primary purpose is to talk about using Manila uh, with uh, Docker and containers. Um, the title we thought, you know, was pretty catchy, and I don't know, we didn't realize how many people, you know, over realized the overlap between Manila the project, which is an envelope, and, you know, Manila the city. So, anyways, it's... Um, the goal here, though, is to talk about um, how we provided a service uh, for Chinese universities, and it was done out of the China Research Lab and IBM. Um, the goal had several, several purposes. One of them was uh, to promote the use of open power. Uh, another one was to show that they can build cloud platforms on top of the open power platform, and then also divide a development platform for uh, students to get involved and start writing applications and you know, basically get them involved in the whole cloud uh, building infrastructure. All right, so this is the team. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the people from the China Research Lab couldn't make it. And uh, Michael Hines, who was on assignment there, uh, also couldn't, couldn't make it. So but we've been working with that team uh, a lot and, so, and helping them get this thing up and running. So we're going to uh, talk about it. The rest of us are from uh, a team working with Spectrum Scale, uh, otherwise known as GPFS, and building cloud, cloud and OpenStack integration with, with Spectrum Scale. All right, so, you know, the goal here is we want to show why we built it, a little bit, expand a little more on what I was just saying. What are all the pieces that we put together to make it work? Um, and then give a demo of the system and what the students actually see when they are using the system. And uh, talk a little bit uh, about the challenges of integrating all of these different projects together inside of OpenStack. All right, so here's an overview of the system um, that has been provided to the, the students. Uh, you can see it's used by about 30 universities right now um, across China. Um, there's a lot of different services then that they've put up um, that the students can then get involved with and use depending on you know, their interests. Um, there's, you can see a big data service, cloud service, HPC uh, type service, uh, and a lot of other uh, aspects to the system. All right, so I think I'm gonna pass it off to Bill now who's gonna talk <coughs> more about the details. All right, thank you. Okay, so as Dean mentioned, a lot of the people working on this project are from research. And it seems to me that people in research want to try and get as many different components as possible, as disparate as possible, and see if they can make them all work together. So in the previous slide, there's a lot of different pieces that the research, one of the research goals is just to prove that they work together, select the right components for the production system. For the analytics piece, um, the big data analytics service, these are the main building blocks. So building an analytics service, you need storage, you need compute, and you need an application. So to provide storage, we're using OpenStack Manila. This is the shared file system service, and I'll talk a little bit more about the details of that next. Then underneath your, um, your Manila service, you need a storage backend. You need a way of, of making storage available to all of your, your different consumers of it, be it Manila as well as the other, the other consumers in the system. And it needs, to be, it needs to be extensible, it needs to be maintainable. So that's where we're using OpenStack, or I'm sorry, IBM Spectrum Scale. Then for compute instances, we want something that's fast, easy to use, easy to bring up, and doesn't consume a lot of resources. That's where Docker containers fit. Now you've got your compute and you've got your storage, you need to be able to provision that and, and easily manage that. So we're using OpenStack Heat for that overall management of the environment, being able to, to provision both storage and the containers. And finally, what's the, the uh, analytics engine? That's where Apache Spark comes in. So we'll go through each one of these now in a little more detail and explain how we're using them. So Manila is a project that's been in OpenStack at the summit for a year and a half, maybe two years. It's um, matured quite a bit over the last year. And what its main goal in life is providing a shared file system to compute instances. It, like Cinder and other storage applications, it provides a vendor-neutral 
set of APIs for provisioning and attaching file system based storage and supports protocols like NFS, SMB, and in the future other protocols like native um, GPFS NSD protocol. It supports access control for the shares, multi-tenancy, and also supports the, the operations that you might expect. Being able to manage system shares, so create, delete, and list shares. Um, manage access to those shares, so define which, which VMs, which instances can mount different shares. And, and manage the access share rules as well. Finally, something um, with preserving the, the contents of the, the share itself, so being able to do snapshots or clones of the shares in the file system. So that's Manila at a high level. Typical use case, um, I think most people have probably seen this, but you've got an environment here where on the left-hand side you've got the share provider service. This is your controller node. You've got a number of different shares that have been created as well as new ones you want to create. On the right, you've got your compute environment. This is where your instances are running or can be launched. And instances, again, can be VM, can be Docker, can be VMs, or they can be Docker containers. So the first use case is you've got an existing share. You want to make that available to a certain number of, of compute instances. With Manila, you can say, for my R&D share, I want to publish that or make that available to um, compute instances five and seven. So with Manila, you set that up. Um, then from those compute instances, you can mount that shared file system and begin using the data, publishing, publishing or consuming data. The next use case is you don't have the share yet. You can create that from the Manila interface. You can specify things like quotas, how much space is available to the, the users of this. And then in the same way, you can publish that shared file system to one or more compute instances. And we don't show it here, but with Manila, you can, com you can publish that to VM instances, Docker instances, as well as bare metal instances. It's just a set of IP addresses that you're publishing to. So it's a very general service for managing shared file systems. OK, next, a uh, little bit of information about Spectrum Scale. This is the product formerly known as GPFS. And it's, uh, as we show here, it's a high performance um, clustered file system. But what we're excited about and how we're using it in the OpenStack environment is that it provides a uh, data plane for all of the different kinds of, of use cases you want to deploy on this storage. So from the OpenStack perspective, we've got um, Nova, Sender, Manila, Glance integration. We also have object storage that's, that's integrated tightly with the spectrum scale environment coming out soon. And then you've got the, the data plane. Below the data plane, you've got a variety of different kinds of storage. You can have SSDs. You can have, um, um, you can have storage controllers like an XIV or a V7000 or another vendor storage. You can have um, a GNR native RAID environment. You can even have tape and cloud storage. All of these are, are configured within spectrum scale as storage pools. And by doing that, that allows you to do things like create um, policies that automatically will move data from different levels of storage, different classes of storage to another, depending on the definitions in your policy. So I can write a policy that says, if data is being accessed frequently, if it's hot, I want to move it to SSD and reduce latency. Contrarily, if I have data that's rarely accessed, hasn't been accessed for a week or a month, I can automatically tear it off to a lower class of storage, tape or even uh, another cloud system. So those are a couple of the key features that we really um, like in GPFS and are trying to leverage in the OpenStack environment. The key is we're trying to provide data in the best location, on the best tier, at the right time, and make that data available across the data plane. So then how do we integrate Manila with Open, with, um, with Spectrum Scale. We have a, a GPFS Manila driver that leverages the features of GPFS with Manila. It supports both kernel and Ganesha NFS servers. Um, again, we take advantage of the tiered um, policy-based storage pools. And for quota management, when we create a share within GPFS, that's a GPFS file set. 
and we define the usage quotas at the GPFS level, and so that provides a very convenient way for managing that for our users. You have other enterprise features like encryption, compression, that can be enabled as part of the environment as well. And the Kilo driver is, I'm sorry, the Manila GPFS driver is now available in the Kilo release. So again, how does this look in, um, in a real environment? So we've got our controller node. We've got a number of shares that have been created there or can be created there. You've got a number of compute nodes. And within the compute nodes, you've got, you've got the shares um, mounted there. Manila helps manages mounting those. And then with mount automation that we'll show in the demo, we're able to spin up VMs or spin up containers and have the correct uh, Manila share mounted and available for, for use as soon as the VM comes up or as soon as the Docker instance comes up. Okay, that's at a high level what we're doing with Spectrum Scale and Manila. I'm gonna hand it to Nilesh now. Hi, so thanks Bill uh, for taking us through uh, some of the building blocks like uh, Manila and GPFS in this solution. Now I'll talk a little bit of, about uh, how Docker containers and heat helping us in, uh, to provide the end-to-end -end solution. So why, why are we using Docker containers? So as you know, Docker containers are lightweight, uh, pretty fast, they come up pretty fast, they can be destroyed pretty fast as compared to uh, the VMs. And also they provide a very high density uh, as compared to VMs on a particular compute node, right? So uh, we use Docker containers for various purposes. Uh, one of them is to use, uh, so since uh, this particular uh, deployment that we are working on with Supervisors Cloud is they, they have Juno uh, release. Uh, deployed on their host, and uh, we, we were using doc, uh, the Manila driver for GPFS from the Kilo trunk, right? So they're running the uh, Manila service, all the Manila services itself inside a Docker container, providing a separate environment to run those services, right? And we use uh, Docker containers to uh, deploy and run some of the Python demons. Some of the typical use, usages, as I said, Manila server services run inside a Docker container. And uh, we use uh, Docker containers to deploy big data uh, clusters. And we use uh, heat to do all that thing. So why Manila? So uh, for the Docker containers uh, running a big data service, they needed a, a shared file system to access the ingest data as well as uh, to put the sh uh, results onto, onto, onto it. So since uh, we, we needed a shared file system and shared file system in OpenStack environment is provided by Manila. It, uh, with the GPFS service, a GPFS driver, you get uh, to use NFS shares and that can be created in the, within the OpenStack ecosystem and deployed inside the containers using heat orchestration. So that's why we are using Manila to help us in that sense. So next, uh, so why heat and how that helps? So heat, as you know, is an orchestration engine inside OpenStack ecosystem, right? Uh, so it is based on templating mechanisms. You can create templates wherein you uh, specify the resources that you want, that you uh, want to use inside your deployment and how, how you want to deploy using those resources. So that is, uh, how heat is there and how we he use heat inside our deployment is we create templates where we mention uh, the Manila shares, all, all the parameters required for Manila shares and create stacks. Uh, so the heat stack uh, will create clusters, uh, cluster one, cluster two for, for a particular user. So user logs in and uh, a request for a Spark cluster uh, for his big data applications Right, so these containers are created accordingly using the hit template behind the screens. <clears throat> so how everything fits in together? So this diagram uh, shows how uh, what how all these things, like we said, Manila GPFS containers and uh, uh, and heat, how how all these things fit, fit in together provide a, to provide a solution. So this is an over, overview architect, architecture of this service, 
the supervisor service that is provided, right? So you have UI, user account management, etc. at the top layer and a user dashboard from where he can access services like cloud infrastructure service or big data service. Uh, we are focusing on big data service in this talk. So user uh, accesses the big data service and behind the screen the heat templates uh, comes into picture which uh, works with Nova, Neutron, Manila. It creates a Manila share, creates a uh, uh, subnet using net neutron to launch the docker instances of the requested size we, we provide you you can have three instances or uh, or five instances this is for your uh, students right so to learn the doc, uh, big data so that's how uh, we use glance is used for, as a repository to store the docker images so glance is also uh, coming into the picture and this is how you uh, a shared folder is created by the heat heat engine to give uh, various clusters for user A, user B, user A gets his own folder, shared folder, which automatically is mounted inside the containers that he gets for the big data analytics work that he wants to do. <coughs> so uh, this is a bit deeper look uh, into the system, as as you say, as you can see, uh, the billing and authentication is there. Big data dashboard is there from where user logs in and requests. Heat template, as I said, communicates with Neutron, Manila, Nova Docker, Glance to give you a, a Spark cluster, a container one, container two, container three. One of them is being the master and the others being the slave nodes in the, in the Spark cluster. So we have a small demo. So this demo will uh, show you how are we, how all these things happen. So in this demo, there are two scenarios that we are talking about. First scenario, you create a Spark cluster. The user logs in into the uh, supervisor service. This, by the way, this supervisor service, the PT Open Lab, is uh, online, available, publicly available for anyone to log in and uh, try these things out. So uh, user logs in into the Spark cluster, and he uh, gets a pollution data, PM 2.5 history for the last year. He gets that onto the shared folder that he uh, launches into. Uh, uh, whenever he logs into the Docker container, the master node, he gets a shared folder that is created out of Manila. It is pre-launched, pre-mounted inside all these containers. Uh, he gets that across, so he uh, gets pulls in this uh, pollution data. Uh, puts it into the share folder, which is now available across all these uh, containers in the analytics work, and then uh, launches uh, analytics service, which analyzes this data and produces results. The second scenario is uh, we wanted to show that the same data, the same Manila share can be mounted inside another uh, in Nova instance and can be utilized. So that's how uh, this <coughs> demo is about. Right, it is showing you the super vessel service with various types of services available on top of Power Cloud. You enter the big data service, you create one cluster now. You choose what kind of cluster you want, Spark or Map, map Reduce. We are doing Spark in this environment. You select the disk size you want that is translating into the Manila share size behind the screen. Now, Spark cluster is getting created, all these containers are created, the Manila share is first created, mounted inside all these containers. So user gets an IP address to log in into the master node, the floating IP as is shown over here. He logs in. You need a, uh, to run a VPN to get into this, uh, to log in into this service. Right, so you can see the Manila share is already available and mounted inside this container. CD mount and then you see it is empty right now. Then you get the pollution data as I said. You enter and you can see all the pollution data for the last year that is being available. PM2.25.txt has the, the number of particles, right? It is the actually the number of particles of uh, the polluting agents. 
per day. Then you run uh, the analytic service, run.sh. So within 20 seconds, the last year's date pollution data is analyzed, and you get the results. So as you can see, you get the results, grade one uh, type of pollutants, grade two type of pollutants, and you see the worst dates uh, where, where the pollution was the worst. You also get to see uh, what is the average pollution value across the last year's history. So now we, we are getting into the second scenario wherein we will show uh, how we can use the same data into another instance. So we are using a Python uh, science uh, image to launch another instance. So the image is launched, and you can get into that. You can mount the same data inside this image and, and then use it. This is Python notebook. You log into the web-based uh, notebook for Python processing. So it's a notebook wherein you can write the uh, scientific programs, and here it is pulling the data from this the same file that we saw initially that was put inside uh, the shared folder, now it is available on this instance as well. So it is actually reading this pollution data out of this file and then plotting it. So you are getting a plot of the pollution that has happened over the last year. So thanks for watching this video and welcome to Supervisors. Right, so that is all about this demo. We have another demo uh, uh, which is uh, in much detail, uh, more than 10, 10, 15 minutes or so. We'll post that, uh, which gives what happens behind the screens. We'll post that. Uh, along with this video when, when it is released on, on YouTube. So what are the challenges that we face and what are the learnings? We wanted to share that. So connecting storage to Docker is currently uh, not available, right? So uh, you do not have ways to attach volume inside a container or at, uh, mount a share in, inside a container from, from NOAA. The NOAA APIs are not available there. So what we do is we bind mount uh, this Cinder or Manila shares, uh, Cinder volume or Manila share inside the container. We use actually the Python equivalent of that uh, inside Nova, so that these shares are available inside the containers whenever the container boots in. Uh, also, as I said, uh, we, the Python client in Juno release did not use authentication based on tokens, so we had to pull in some patches from the Kilo release and make it available uh, because our base installation deployment was based on Juno. Heat uh, did not, so, uh, so some of the learnings while we uh, were experimenting with this thing. So we, you have to have the ordering inside the heat template correct, right? So you have to first uh, delete the containers, release the resources, and then, then you delete the uh, storage. It was happening that we were first deleting the storage and then uh, the shares were get, getting deleted and then container was not able to access them. So that has to be properly done. Manila is not yet supported in Cilometer, right? So uh, we cannot get uh, the statistics of the usage of the share, et cetera, inside Cilometer. So uh, currently it is open and uh, free service, but going forward, if someone wants to build a service, uh, a paid kind of service on top of the supervisors cloud, right? Uh, you want the billing information, you want how much how much access happened to the share, et cetera. That time you'll need all these met metrics. Uh, and libcontent also does not support any of these metrics, so that needs to be uh, overcome. Currently it is an unsolved problem, this is one of the challenges that we faced. 
So that's pretty much of it. I think we are pretty good on time. So any questions? Uh, Sahara, I don't know. Well, one thing right now is that Sahara doesn't natively support containers, as far as I know. Um, it's still work there to be done, so that's that's part of the the, the reason there. Um, as well as um, Sahara is not natively uh, hooked into Manila, so that's actually something we really like to work on, is getting those pieces all all fitting in together, right? So that when Sahara uh, launches up. It can, you can provision storage for the, the analytics you want to use and then be able to use those pieces. So Sahara is, is, you know, you can see how many pieces were put together here. So Sahara is yet another piece then to link into the, the overall system. Um, and then the, the third reason there as well is that Sahara currently doesn't support any other file system other than HDFS. So we're working on that as well. Yeah, it, it has some, some hooks, but yeah. It's uh, uh, running um, general, so Spark is okay, but running general Hadoop workloads, I don't know if you saw our talk on Monday, uh, is challenging with Swift as well. So getting all of those pieces put together, um, yeah. So we have, uh, sp uh, as Spark, we have MapReduce service also, right? So, and uh, all these things, uh, binding them, those together, and also Manila being uh, relatively new in the community, and it's not that well integrated with some of these Sahara and some of these things. Yeah? Inside Nova Docker, so, so basically, about, so yeah. Repeat the question and then we'll. Uh... Yeah, the question is uh, oh, yeah, you can again ask the question from the mic. Yeah. Uh, I would like to understand where in Nova um, this takes place, at what stage of the, the provisioning process. Right, so since currently Nova does not support Manila APIs, you cannot use Nova APIs to mount a share inside a container, right? So right. we had to uh, uh, pass on the user data to the Nova Docker, the cloud init, uh, will then uh, create a container based on that user data, it will mount the share inside. Okay, um, another question I have is, in your demo you showed logging into something and then running the, the job. Mm -hmm. uh, was that something, the container itself? And, yeah, and it, it's the master node of the container. Okay, so does that mean uh, you had a SSHD running in, in the container? How, how does that work? All right, so we, we have, uh, so you get the floating IP when you create a, a cluster, right? And you, you get a VPN account. And you log into that that particular floating IP, and then port forwarding happens to uh, inside to land you inside the container. You actually do SSH inside the container itself. Yeah, I'm asking because um, one of the best practices around containers, at, at least that uh, people hear a lot, is you use one app, one process, one service per container. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you, in your case, you were using containers more like. Um, Operating systems. Yeah, kind of, but it is mainly for the big data service, and uh, but you can SSH because you need to pull in the data that you want to process in, right? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any any other questions? No. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you.